All right. <clears throat> Hello, gang. All fresh and ready to begin again. The painting is not quite as dry as I would like it to be, but I hope we can get by. <clears throat> First of all, as you can see very often before I do a glaze, I'll make some crazy random marks. These will be greatly diminished when I put the glaze on, of course, but they'll still be visible to as much as I want. The more that I rub them in the glaze process, the more they'll disappear. So I'll have, I have a lot of control. And as you can see, once again, I'm putting mostly cool colors up here in the warm part of the painting and some warm colors down here in the... Still at it, huh? I am. Did you go to bed last night? Yes, I did, happily. <laughs> Very happily went to bed. Thank you. Whoops. All right, that's good enough. By the way, these are these are basically oil paint sticks is what I'm doing that with. Paint stick. Here's a here's a brand name just in case anybody wants to know. <clears throat> All right, let's zoom in a little bit. I have uh, my photo references here on this phone. I will be working on, on uh, Greg and Caroline uh, much of the day today, but not right now because the first thing I'm going to do, as I said in the title there, is a glaze. Well, glaze is plural if you prefer. <clears throat> in fact, I do want to look at, the, at my photo reference real quickly. There you go. This is the the main image I've been using for the to go by the room. You no, know? and that doesn't really help very much, so a little bit. I feel like I want to uh, darken these windows a little bit, make them a little darker, more twilight blue. So you see there was a red stri stripe there and, and orange there and green there. So. I just um, continue to rub those areas. The more I rub, the more they'll disappear. So I don't want them to disappear completely, usually. So, um, but I have extreme control. Does that make sense? So it, it, it looks like I was putting those uh, color strokes on so carelessly. I really was because I knew that I would have very fine control. Gosh, I thought you were through last night. Almost, not quite, <laughs> not quite. Uh, yeah. This, by the way, is a good lesson in how do you paint white things? The answer is layer and layer and layer. And the other answer is my smart aleck answer. How do you paint white objects? The answer is by not using white paint. That's, that's an exaggeration to make the point 
the point being, you save your white paint till late, 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 late in the process. So I just glazed over the bottom half of her dress again. Um, even though her entire dress is beautiful, and in the photograph, it's brilliant white all the way down here. In the painting, we don't want people looking here at the painting. We don't want them looking here. So I'm going to, it's as if, you know, the spotlight was on them, and this part of her dress was um, in shadow. That's, that's the sense one will have in looking at the painting, even though the photograph is not like that at all. That's, again, we're not in the business of copying photographs. You know that already. Okay, so I'm looking, where else do I want a little bit of blue? When I finish this blue glaze, then I'm going to go immediately into um, yeah, let me think. This is too much the same value. Oh, and you guys can't see it because of the glare of the light. Sorry. Um, that's a problem. So I guess I'll do the, just the classic uh, vignette darken both corners. I thought they were dark enough, and in fact they were, but compared to, everything's relative, right? It's dark enough, except that, yeah, light here in the middle, and this, this will be a, a uh, chandelier that I will brighten up as well. Once again, see I want, most of the time I want those little, those crazy marks that I make to be barely visible. And again, someone should, would ask the question, well, I don't get it. Why do you do those? <laughs> Probably in that tone of voice, too. <laughs> um, boy, that's a hard one to answer. I will say that's what good painters know and bad painters don't. I'm sorry, that's kind of snobby, isn't it? Um, it's because I, I want the painting to be interesting to look at, and I happen to know, this, again, I'm being a little bit of a smart aleck here, but I happen to know, not as well as some, believe me. If I did, I'd be the best painter in the world, but certainly not that. But I happen to know what pleases the human eye. And in fact, little bits of abstract runaway color, if I can call it that, is just one of thousands of things that, in fact, please, pleases the human eye. An early begin, a beginner artist, an early journey artist, as I talked about last night, is usually stuck on realism, similitude, accuracy, as they should be. Um, but uh, at some point in the journey, m most of us discover it's not about realism. It's about line, shape, color, design, value, texture, okay, the elements of design. Now those, that's just a boring list, of course, but when it's applied, and those principles are applied, so I just gave you a, a, a very strange example of, when I say color, that's the abstract elements of design. Why did I add, why is there a red streak that, it's actually a little bit too much of a red streak there. Let me fix that. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more glazing. I am using um, Indian yellow and a tiny bit of orange. Warm up some of this. There we go, that's nice, that's nice. It's nice when that happens. <laughs> Everything you do as an artist, before you do it, you're hoping that it's gonna look cool, that it's gonna look good. You could say that it's gonna look beautiful. You're hoping it's going to add to the painting. But you don't really know, I mean, you have a good guess, but you don't really know, no, 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 <laughs> until you put it on the canvas. Then your eyes make the judgment. 
you paint very much like a musician, a good musician plays with his ears, a good artist paints with his eyes, not with a recipe book, not with a, oh, do this and do this and do this and do this. I mean, you, it's okay to use, you know, a formula while you'll, you are in the process of learning. Absolutely. We all do that. We all do that. It's like the difference between, I, I would say, a cook and a chef, right? A cook paints by a cookbook. A chef writes the cookbook, right? And cooks by taste, not by book. So an artist paints by sight. So I don't really know if it's going to look good till I put it on the canvas and look at it with my eyes. And it's nice when the effect is, ooh, that looked good, that looks good. That means I guessed correctly, I guessed right. All right, now, let me see if there's, whoops. Let me see if I need to do any wiping off. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit too much blue. Let's pull that down. But see again, I have control because I can control how much I want to take off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Their, their faces. Uh, I'm not going to try to to glaze those. be working on their faces actually much of the day today everybody's coming up it's typical and saying oh it's so beautiful looks just like them and so on and so forth but it doesn't really look just like them it's close so it's my job to take take it the painting to a place where most people can't see it yet and that's all right it's not their job to see it all right now a little bit of glow or fuzz and I want to pull up the again my photo reference of the building not not the bride and groom at the moment I just want to see I don't have to copy this of course I'm not I'm not interested in copying but but very often you know, the photograph, the scene before you, the reference. By the way, I can also turn around and look at this scene for details, like for architectural details. That's a great uh, advantage, benefit today, being painting in the same place I was last night. Hello, Inigo. And Inigo, did, you, did I answer the question when you saw the glaze? What's the glaze for? to make the painting look better. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's true, of course. Um, glaze is, of course. Coming along beautifully. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it. Watching last night, uh, crazy. You've been working hard at this. <laughs> I have, you indeed. Mind if I take a picture? Absolutely. I mean, no, absolutely, I don't mind. <laughs> Um, the glaze, of course, is transparent color, right? And uh, transparent colors are always richer, more interesting, more beautiful, partier <laughs> than, than opaque colors. So whenever possible, introduce um, transparent onto your painting or into your painting. Now, I'm doing uh, translucent. Again, this is what I call the fuzz layer, or the glow layer. Um, just as it sounds, I'm, I'm adding fuzzy areas of glow to the painting. So all very soft edges, no, no hard, no definition. Forgive me, I'm about to stand right in front of you, aren't I? Move you. And I am looking at the photograph a little bit here for, for suggestions, for reference. It's like, oh yeah. The 
there's a there's a, a truly a beautiful beautiful glow in the the ceiling of this room last night and uh, let's see big part of what I'm trying to capture right now the architecture of course is beautiful for those who missed last night's broadcast I am painting in Palm Beach Florida this is the world-famous Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach here I'll turn you around so you can see the world-famous Breakers Hotel. So this is the Mediterranean Club uh, room. I'm trying to point you at the ceiling in particular. Am I getting it? Yeah. Of course it doesn't have at all the lighting that it did last night. But you can actually see the details in the ceiling better today than you could last night. The whole thing is painted in the Italian style. This building, this particular building was built after the first two <laughs> burnt down. I laugh, only, it's a wry laugh, it's a sad laugh. It's like, oh my goodness. Anyway, this building was built in 1925 and is an imitation of the Medici Palace in Florence. One of the Medici Palaces, I don't know which one. <laughs> anyway, I can read my. I can read my tourist brochure, yes I can. <laughs> but it's an absolutely beautiful place. And of course I am trying to capture the essence of that glow last night. I want, this is a good example of this that I'm doing right here. I want the viewer's eye, I want the viewer's brain, mind, the seeing part of their brain to, to reconstruct the, the essence, the details of this ceiling. I would like anybody like Gregory and Caroline when they look, every time they look at the painting, of course, I want them to have the feeling that, you know, take a breath like gas, like, oh, that's exactly what it looks like, okay? Without me painting exactly what it looks like. See, that's the, that's the pitfall that most early journey painters fall into. They think, well, if I want it to look exactly like, you know, the ceiling of the Mediterranean uh, conference room, clubhouse room, club room, of the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> if, if I want it to look exactly like that, then I should just paint it. Just, just hunker down, get to work. It's gonna take you 27 and a half hours. If you just do a quick version, it's gonna take you 50 hours if you, anyway, do you, do you get the point? But that in, that in fact is not the way good art works in my humble opinion. <laughs> you can decide whether it's humble or not. That's not the way good art works. The way good art works is I give you just the right amount of information. I give you just your eyes, just the right amount of suggestion, and you're inside your head, in the, in the screen, the picture screen of your brain, you, your brain, your mind finishes the picture and makes you think, oh, it looks, and of course, most of you have never been here, so, but the effect is still, you, you get a sense of what the room looks like without me painting every little Cupid and I presume naked angel hanging up. Not quite naked. <laughs> I don't know, if, I guess, I don't know if they're angels or not. I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Here. <laughs> Since I've, since I've done that much, <laughs> see the, the ceiling predictably is covered with female figures and little Cupid characters, right? Just full, 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 full. I mean, just the whole thing. So, um, of course, I'm not going to paint all that stuff. 
But what I want the viewer, what I want in this case, the owners of the painting, who will be Caroline and Greg here, every time they look at the painting, I want them to feel like, oh, that's exactly what it looked like. Okay, that's the, that's the magic of art, the magic of painting. It's not that I do all the work of copying every little cupid and scantily <laughs> clad woman painted on the ceiling. Not at all. <laughs> um, it's my job to give you, to give, let's say in this case, Greg and Caroline, just enough information so that they feel like they're looking at, a, so to speak, an exact replica. Their brain will finish the picture. Okay. Am I am I even going to hint at any? It's conceivable that I would hint at one of those figures there. Probably not, but it's it's conceivable. Why wouldn't I do that? Because <laughs> I hope it's obvious. Because this painting is about Brad and Groom, Greg and Caroline. It's not about that. So they would probably draw too much attention to the ceiling if I were to do that. I hope all that makes sense. <laughs> wow. I'm going to take another picture of this, uh, these chandeliers here. They're like little light castles in the ceiling. Very, very constructed constructed, very built up. There. That's that's what they look like. <laughs> you are truly a performing artist. I am indeed. <laughs> Do you have any technical performing arts history like theater or anything? No. Just, just, just show off comes natural I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's excellent. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I'm, I'm almost finished with the fuzz, by the way. Let me just do a little bit more. I've got a... So let me give you, again, for those of you who are perhaps new to my channel, a glaze is pure transparent color, right? Like colored glass or cellophane, right? Over your eyes. Think about when you're a little kid. Your mom came home from the grocery store back in the day more things were wrapped with colored cellophane than they are now and as a kid you could you would take that and put it over your eyes and go ooh mama look it look it look it because you were just so overwhelmed with the pure visual so that's what that's what a glaze does it's an ooh mommy look it <laughs> moment okay so glaze is transparent and uh, fuzz is translucent very different the next i know you know the difference so i won't bore you with the definition of those two words, even though other people who will remain unmentioned <laughs> do confuse those two words sometimes. I want just, I want just a hint of the uh, marble floor, the checkerboard marble floor. Little bit more glow around this light up here. All right, I think I'm ready now to start doing not them. I just want to make a little more progress everywhere else. So the painting has changed. I've got fresh paint over the entire canvas now, by the way. I don't know if you're keeping score, uh, but just in the last few minutes, I have put a fresh coat of paint, <laughs> if I may, can use that word. All right, now, I'm, I'm doing all the uh, candles on the tables. And I, by the way, I don't mean to infer that I'm doing all the candles on the table. Once again, my job is to make inference. My job is to suggest if I do a good job, Oh, I failed to mention this earlier. Why does it why does it matter that the viewer's 
I finishes the painting instead of me, the artist, finish the painting. And, and um, I believe that when the viewer's brain, so to speak, mind, more to the point, when the viewer's mind connects the dots, the human brain likes to connect the dots. And so when I, when I don't do all the work for you, but I allow your brain to connect the dots, you actually experience pleasure. Real, literal, as I like to say, a little drop of joy juice gets released in your brain when you finish the picture instead of me finishing the picture. Now we are all, myself included, we're all impressed by the skill, the industry, the time taken to do hyper-realistic or very realistic or photorealistic paintings, right? We are. We're all impressed. In fact, the typical 20th century art professor uh, does not even like to admit that, doesn't like to admit that human beings, I, I believe, universally enjoy, get a kick out of seeing hyperrealism, myself included. In fact, that's every once in a while, just as every once in a while I will do a purely, I do purely abstract painting, so likewise, every once in a while I'll do a hyperrealistic painting, just for fun, just because it is fun to do. It's also good practice. So if you're an artist, well, here's, I recommend this to all my students. If you're a painter, particularly, not all artists are painters, I understand. But if you're a painter, you, you owe it to yourself. You need to do one uh, photorealistic, hyperrealistic, superrealistic painting. Possibly just one, ever, just one. But you need to do one. Um, that's what you are so now, and you can, so to speak, cheat. You can use every photo mechanical device and trick in the book. Trace, project, line. You know, to to do that, you don't you don't have to do like I'm doing and just paint uh, on the fly. No, no, you go ahead. And I'm using the word cheat. You understand? I hope you know. What I mean. It's okay. Cheating is legal. Anyway, you must do, you should do one hyper-realistic painting um, because of what you will learn and also because then your friends will stop <laughs> secretly thinking that the reason you do impressionistic paintings is because you lack the ability to do realism. We won't tell them if that's true, but we'll prove to them that it's not by having you do one. Take, it'll take 30 or 40 hours. It's mostly just a matter of sitting on your butt and doing it. It just takes a long time. But everybody should do one. All right, back to... <laughs> Let's get off that. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I don't know if Greg and Caroline, the bride and groom here, are ever going to watch this video, but it's part of the reason I do this is so that sometime after they're home from their honeymoon and they have a bored moment, they say, hey, remember that guy that painted at a wedding? Yeah, we didn't have time to watch him. We were busy. And um, <laughs> so they watch it. But I just had a picture, an image of them watching it. Because <laughs> they're not, you know, they're not part of my normal crew. <laughs> they kind of look at each other and say, does he go on like this all the time? <laughs> See, last night I had to broadcast much of the evening in silence because of the loud copyrighted music. <laughs> so they don't, they don't know that I usually, yes. <laughs> Carolyn, Caroline and Greg, if you watch this, the answer is yes. <laughs> I drone on like this <laughs> endlessly. <laughs> All my regulars are going, uh-huh, he does. There is method to my madness, however. Some of you have heard the expression that the teacher learns more than the students. Part of the reason I drone on endlessly is it keeps my mind very focused on 
what I know, so to speak, about art, about painting. All these principles that I'm telling you, I'm in fact reinforcing them simply by doing the act. Of, and of course, I'm a, I'm a natural born teacher. I mean, that is, I'm, I'm born to be wild. No, born to teach. Born, <laughs> not, not born to be very wild. <laughs> I'm wild in my own way. How about, leave me alone. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you can see the difference. See what I just did. Um, but that made a big difference. So I'm, I'm to the point now, ignoring them for the moment. I have work to do, there's, there's too much. Here's, when I talk about, I need to give enough information. In my mind, there's not quite enough information up here. Now that's real dangerous because the, the tendency among all painters, myself included, is to overdo it, over explain, do too much. So I'm, I'm aware of that, but I think there's not quite enough definition up here. So I'm going to do more definition. Down here, however, I'm nearly... Do you want me to help you talk? Say that again? Do you want me to help you talk? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm nearly at the, the magic zone. We see... Here's, here, I want people to see, of course, people standing and seating. Tables with tablecloths, candles, flowers, candles, chairs, that's very important because there's always chairs. Uh, that's the parents of the groom, that's the parents of the bride. I'll work on them a little bit more, but I'm almost at the magic point where your eye turns all of this mess into things. So we'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that part for now then. and do a little bit more up here. I'm avoiding at the moment uh, getting to work on, on, on Greg and Caroline. I will probably end this broadcast and start another one with a different title. And I will show you some of the tricks that I use to make corrections and refinements. <coughs> Again, my goal last night during the reception was to get them just close enough so that all the people in attendance would feel like the painting was done or close enough to done. Get it? So they feel like they've seen the whole process. So I feel like I accomplished that. Most people, you know, thought it was done and would think it was done, but it's not. Um, they will be, in this case, their faces will be um, just about photographic when I'm finished. It's the only part of the painting, of course, that will be anywhere near that realistic. And that's very standard, uh, that, that trick of making you know, the, the face, the faces, or the portraits realistic and everything else abstract. That's very standard uh, through history. You know, John Singer Sargent and so on. John and his ilk. <laughs> My buddy John. Okay, I'm going to pull up once again the, uh, the photograph that I was working from last night. Again, not, I don't need to copy it, but very often the, the photograph will give you ideas, will spark things that wouldn't necessarily get sparked if I didn't have a photograph. So the, I used the photograph in this case, or if I was painting on plein air, right? No photograph, just standing painting. Um, I used the photograph to make the painting better and more interesting. 
because it suggests things to me that I may not have thought about on my own. So, but it's not a matter of copying, slavishly reproducing what's in the photograph, not at all. So I'm going to try to move you guys in a little bit closer. <clears throat> what happens so often is when I move the when I uh, move the camera like this, then I forget to move you back when I'm done with this area. So hopefully I'll remember to move the other way. Let me. I'll let you just watch up close what I'm doing. I just did some of that. So obviously, at least I'm assuming it's obvious. I'm trying to indicate drapery, right? And not just any drapery, I'm in fact trying to suggest the very drapery that's in the Mediterranean ballroom of the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, Florida, <laughs> right? Also, uh, not just these not just the drapery, but the drapery with the lighting that was on it last night, etc., etc., etc. So I'm trying to give you, the viewer, whoever that may be, you in this case, enough information so that when you glance at it, you ideally take a little intake of breath and say, oh, it looks exactly like, and of course, You all have, don't have to have been to this place. Hey, the the um, Heather suggested that if we want food, that we tell her. So it sounded like they don't want us to go through the line. I think she's just being cautious, and that's all right. Next. I'd be happy to, but you and <laughs> So I don't know if you can see. You see this little blush of of green? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, now that I'm up, now that you can see it up close, what is the purpose of that? Does it serve any purpose? And now that I'm doing, you know, fairly realistic stuff around it. The answer is absolutely yes. It's a little surprise. Actually, technically, it would be called broken color, which I will do a little bit more of later in the day. Let me step back now. I, I think that, that that one went... And by the way, this, this drapery will have more detail than all the others because, of course, because of its proximity to... Greg and Caroline, right? You know that. So th this is the most realistic one. They will get more abstract as we move out from there. And speaking of abstract, let's, I'm gonna move you again. You need to eat it on the side.
All right, back. Had a little bit of business there. All right, where should I go? Hello, Brenda S. Thank you. Hello, James. I appreciate that, Brenda. Oh, I know. I was, I'm sorry, I had to have a brief conference with my wife. Who's here, thank God, taking care of me. <laughs> Gonna go get me a little food this morning. Um, so one impulse, so the OCD impulse would be, since I had just painted this drapery, then I should do this one and this one and this one and this one, right? Yeah, but no, it's probably not the best plan. And I'm going to explain why. Um, think of the, the painting, especially a portrait. This is so obvious on this particular painting. Thank you. Um, this is the bullseye. Think of this as a target. This is the absolute bullseye of the painting. In fact, her face even more than his, right? And then you go out in concentric circles from there. The further the ring, the further out, generally speaking, the more abstract the painting should become. Okay? So I explained that earlier. This is the most realistic curtain, less and less and less. But now that I've done this, I really need to come in here and uh, work, do work on the... Hang on, again, I'm pulling up my reference photo from last night. <clears throat> I really need to do some work on the windows, the, the window that is right behind the bride and groom. So, I'm mixing up the pale, uh, oops, just got too much green on my brushes. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, you try to pick up a little bit of paint and you actually pick up too much. And I say that particularly because I think some of you can I just say beginners for the moment? Early journey painters. That happens to you when you get mad at yourself and you think it doesn't happen to the pros. Oh, come on, get off it. We all live on the same planet. It happens to everybody. Don't be mad at yourself. Just, I wiped off my brushes because it had too much green in it. So I'm using phthalo blue, which is a greenish blue, right? A warm blue. And, um, I want to be almost this, the color that's there, but a little bit brighter. Bingo. Got it. And as you can see, once again, I'm trying to indicate. Uh, the mullions, the little boards, the little sticks that divide up this window. A, a key element in the in the room. Oh good, here comes my wife and a cup of coffee. Thanks, sweetie. Thank you. Ah, oh, that's good. Can you believe I made it all the way to 10 o'clock without any coffee? <laughs> Actually, not quite that much of a coffee. Fiend. But in the recent years, I have become quite fond of a morning cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm standing back here a lot um, because that, this is very, this is very delicate. This is very important. Oh, of course, the good news is if I make a really bad mistake, mistake, quote unquote, error in judgment, I could come in and wipe wipe this off some of it but but that's a hassle as as you can well imagine that's pretty extreme so i'm going to try the, what i'm what i'm trying to balance what i'm trying to weigh out here is degree of intensity of light color of light color of the blue
pull up. I'm not ready to work on her face a lot yet, or either of their faces, but a little bit. Let me pull that up. By the way, I paint their portraits, of course, from my phone. A phone is such a great invention. Better than a good camera, if you will, because uh, even a good Canon SLR digital camera doesn't have a viewfinder this big on the back of it normally, right? So look, I can blow her, if you can see that. <laughs> if I need to later on in the day, that's her, that's her mouth, right? So I can really get her big, blow, uh, blow their faces up. Um, when I take the pictures, another advantage of the uh, phones is that they, they take fast, you know, machine gun, I call it, right? I probably took three or four hundred pictures of, maybe more, of Greg and Caroline last night when they were dancing because every, every picture I took was a photo burst, 20, 25, 30 shots. Um, and then, of course, it takes several minutes I'm going through all those and trying to pick out the best one. So that's that's been my process of wedding painting for several years now. And I, I'm, I'm not ready to get super... Thank you, sweetie. Appreciate it. If you, whoever, whoever's watching now, if you happen to miss it, I'm, I'll tell you a little bit about how I will make how I will make corrections in their faces later on. Um, I will take. With this phone, I will take a close-up photo of my painting. I'll take a picture of my painting. Click, click. Then in, a, in an app in my phone, um, I'll make a collage. So I have a photo of the photo. I'm being silly. So I have the photo and the painting right next to each other in my, on my phone screen. And then I'll reverse them, mirror image. And that's where I will really see the corrections that I need to make. <clears throat> now go ahead and respond to someone named James. Bless you. Thanks for making a comment. Um, I really do appreciate that, and it's it's always fun to, when people have suggestions. But um, I'm going to gently counter you and say no. Sharpening the panes here would be one of the first, in, in a sense, most obvious mistakes that an early journey painter would make. In fact, look between their faces. The, the pains completely disappear. Now I'm working on the next window over. Whoops, it's still too, too light, too bright. Um, to um, make the pains sharp, and if, if, as one would say, realistic, would way too much compete with the faces. Plus, just the, the, even if there weren't faces here, I wouldn't make them sharp because for the reasons I, I've been saying for the last several minutes, um, my job as a good artist, your job as a good artist, is to give the viewer just in the right perfect balance of information. It's, it's a balance between 
literal and abstract, if you will, or realistic and messy. I'll even use that childlike language. It's a, it's a perfect balance you're aiming for. Now, catch, getting the perfect balance is, is a lifetime work. You know, every, every stroke I put down, I'm, I'm putting it down because I hope it's going to be the perfect balance of real versus messy. Because if I can get that balance just right, then, then your brain will turn those into sharp, we'll just call them window panes, mullions, window panes, without me actually painting them. And that is, that is what creates um, pleasure in your brain. A little bit of joy juice gets released, bzing, into your brain. If I, if I s succeed in hitting that infinitesimal balance, right? So that's, that's the world I live in, and that's the world, frankly, most of the good painters throughout the centuries have lived in. Um, there's, there's, there have always been the hyper-realists um, among us, always, always, always. And I admire their work, and I do some of that sometimes, just for fun. All right, I'm almost getting... I'm literally messing up what I just did with the nice handle of this brush, because I was getting a little bit too detail. I think, I do think I will go ahead and do the next window, however. So the next window, once again, darker, <clears throat> dirtier, <laughs> not as in dirty window, but dirtier color on my brushes. So I was mixing up something right here. Let's see if I, nope, I'm too too blue, I want it to be a little bit green. The color coming through the windows last night um, in the evening it was, uh, in my, to me, in my mind, surprisingly green. Um, there was a thunderstorm outside last night, and I'm not obligated, of course, to, I don't think anybody looking at the painting would, <laughs> would ever say, oh, it's a thunder. No, 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 no. But it was beautiful. And I, I have the photograph here to show you. The ambient, the, the light in the whole room. Of course, there were, you know, armies of professional light crew people setting everything up. Um, but it was surprisingly green because, well, here, I'll turn you around just for fun. I'll let you look out the windows in the daytime. So it didn't look anything like this. But <clears throat> So the reason it looked surprisingly green was not so much because because there are can I do this because there are green bushes and trees here and here it looked green because of the beige colored buildings in late evening light does that make sense I don't know if that and nobody cares but I'll explain that to you anyway <laughs> Uh, we do a lot of that around here, Greg and Caroline. <laughs> it's a weird art thing. You, you wouldn't understand unless you were a weird artist. <laughs> Your coffee's good. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's me. Right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's funny. When I, do, when I do paintings, crowds of people, I really pay a lot of attention to color. Oh. <laughs> I do. Except when everybody in the wedding is white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love it. And did you notice, I'm a musician. I'm a pretty good musician. Whenever you have a good band, 
What color are they usually? Black. Black. <laughs> is, that, is that right? <laughs> it's it's real. And as a musician, I, I say that with. <laughs> but I I don't know. If, I'm sure you notice because I always notice. You know, a whole crowd of white people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was one. That's right. You would find him. I know it. I know it. I'm aware of that. <laughs> You're beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> you. You just caught a little bit of fun conversation with one of the uh, employees here at this fine establishment. <laughs> it's a little bit of... I'm pretty... I'm... What's the word? Um... Man, I don't want to get, I'm not going to get political, but I will get philosophical and historical. Maybe even a tad spiritual. I've, I've been engaged as a, as a man of peace, as a, uh, uh, an activist, as a spiritual advisor in my hometown of Raleigh, North Carolina. I've been in, actively engaged in, in a lot of racial reconciliation issues literally for decades so I'm and as partly as a result of that because my conscience is clear much to the chagrin of everybody who wants my conscience to be a smoldering mass of self-recrimination which it ain't uh, so I'm, I tend to be very free uh, in racial conversations sometimes to the surprise and embarrassment of the people I'm talking with. And that's all right. One of the indications that we're still a racist country is not what a lot of people think. It's that we can't talk freely is the problem. Like I just did there as a musician, there is no question in my that's mind. You. Oh, I'm in it. <laughs> I see myself. <laughs> Good. Amazing. <laughs> Thank this you. This is so good. I guess like you're still working on that. Thank you. So good. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> so cool. Thank you. Anyway, we'll leave that subject. If it comes back on its own, I'll let it. Hello, Brenda S. <laughs> I do love the world I live in too. I'm a blessed man, aren't I? Just for what it's worth, by the way. And I honestly didn't, I did not realize this before my wife and I, we drove down from uh, North Carolina, about a 12 hour drive. We did it in two days. We enjoy being together, we enjoy driving together. And flying is such a hassle, as you all know. It's just almost not worth the, the time saved flying, you know, to go through the pain. Whew! Anyway. Um, when, I, when people hire me to uh, paint a wedding, as part of the contract is they, they pay for my travel and they pay for my lo our lodging. But I don't usually expect them to put me up Well, frankly, the way we <laughs> we've been put up this this weekend, and so this is a five-star hotel. In case you can't tell, <laughs> and uh, we're loving it. I'm always really glad that my mom and dad taught their children how to behave. <laughs> and we're my wife and I are very comfortable in <laughs> in the lifestyles of the rich and famous, even though it's not our normal. We're enjoying it very much. So, uh, thank you, Greg. I don't. I think it was. I, I, I don't know. I think it might have been your parents who were paying for this, for that. So I bless them. We've we've enjoyed being here very much. I'm standing back again, looking at the relative lightness of all of these colors. One of the mistakes that, by the way, that I make uh, far too often because I am painting, uh, no, because I'm broadcasting almost always when I'm painting, um, 
one of the mistakes that is easy for me to make is I don't back up from the painting as often as I should because I'm busy entertaining you all. So that's a mistake I'm trying not to make. <laughs> and I try to remember more and more. There was a little there was a little highlight of blue. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. By the way, that's that's right there. That's actually a, a principle. That's one application of an abstract principle that I'll mention since I've gone this far into it. It's one of those, there are thousands of these, literally thousands of these little rules. And the more rules you know, the more rules you can remember, the better painter you will be. Um, one of the rules is the human eye. I like to, I like to put it that way because my the point I'm trying to make is no, this is not a matter of opinion. This is not well. That's your opinion. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong, but no. -uh. These are universals. These are absolute universals. Okay. The principle is. You guys are getting nothing but glare. Let me see if you're better from over here. Oh yeah, that's better. One of the principles is the human eye likes to see little bits of the object that have escaped into the background and little bits of the background that have escaped into the object. So in this case, the window is the object. The blue is coming forward as the object and all this is the background. And so a little bit of the object, blue, has escaped into the background. Boom, 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 boom. Um, so that's that. what I just did is not simply a uh, a, an attempt at realism, although there is the hint of it, the barest hint. I've exaggerated a great deal, but there is the barest hint of that in the in my photograph from last night. But even if there were, even if it wasn't realistic, um, it would very likely be a good idea. Again, for the very, in fact, I'm going to do more of it right here. The very, for the reason I just stated, the human eye gets a kick, likes, enjoys, gets pleasure. It's, again, it's my job to, to know these rules. It's not, it's never the, it's not the, you know, only, only an artist would, would, under, would know this. I don't expect anybody to, to walk up to a painting and say, oh yes, my eye is pleased by the fact that there's some of the background has escaped into the, of course not. But that, that little bit is a distinct, I think, while, I'm, while I've got bluish green on my brushes, I'm going to go to um, some of photographs from last night of the tables. The tables were, I mean, everything here, as you can imagine, everything here was spectacular. But I, I did, I, I took a number of close-ups of the tables, and of course this, this will do absolutely no justice whatsoever. Um, but I want to, there were, the color, the, the tables, most wedding reception tables are overwhelmingly white. And um, I must say, perhaps as an artiste, I'll calm myself that for a minute. The, whoever designed the tables last night uh, is, was, was a true artist. And I, I, by the way, I, that's, even at the 150 weddings or 200 weddings that I've done, you know, all the table designers are artists. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I had great respect for every kind of art, the floral art, the lighting in a place like this. Anyway, but the table the table decoration really jumped out at me, and um, there was a lot of color. A lot of it was um, Florida themed. There's a lot of citrus fruits and little, I don't know, kumquat looking, you know, oranges, lemons cut in half and quarters and little things in the, in the flowers and candles and so forth, so which was a, definitely a, a Florida-ish theme I'm looking at. But in particular, there were these um, jade-colored glasses, a glass at every uh, little stemware, not, not a wine glass, probably a water glass at every setting was a 
in particular was a jade colored kind of a turquoise uh, glass nothing I don't think anything expensive or fancy just beautiful just the right color anyway I'm talking way too much <laughs> doggone it you're listening <laughs> Anyway, so while I had that color on my brushes, I just added a bit of that. And of course, there is another abstract rule, which m many people, even beginners, so to speak, early journey painters are often very aware of this, that um, if you have a color somewhere in the painting, it's usually a good idea to have that same color somewhere else. So I just did a, I just did a bit of that by taking some of the blue-green of the windows and putting it down here and it's realistic because of those jade colored glasses but so that's again that's one of those things and that that's a very well-known one so I'm, I'm glad that you already knew that one and I'm sorry that I'm in, insulting your intelligence <laughs> um, I'm standing back for a minute it's coming along. It is coming along. I'm, I will tell you that I'm, I'm quite happy with the painting. It's got good bones. It's got good overall structure. I'm just not done yet. Especially, especially with Caroline and Greg. But even besides that, I'm not done. The, the danger as an artist at this point in a, in a painting really is to turn off my brain, so to speak, and mindlessly keep painting. Just noodling it to death. Details. Oh, let's add a chair. Or let's, let's make this chair more realistic. There's a chair right there. You know, or let's... Anyway, that's what I need to watch out for. Don't turn off my brain and just start noodling it <laughs> noodling it to death just in case you wondered so I am not going to broadcast all day today because it, uh, even though I could be painting maybe all day it would just be too boring because I, I must especially because unlike last night where I was in a I had to paint quickly well first of all I always paint quickly but I, I, I also had to paint quickly because I'm, I was part of the entertainment, right? So I had to, in a little, little razzmatazz, you know, keep, keep the ball rolling, keep, keep going down the field to, so that people are enjoying the process. I can take that responsibility pretty seriously. I don't have that same pressure today, even though there are people enjoying a nice brunch here right now. Um, so the, the biggest safeguard against doing what I just said, noodling it to death, and sort of, in a sense, turning off my brain, putting my head down and just painting details. Uh, the, the, the greatest safeguard to that is paint slowly and take lots of breaks. Stand back from, as I mentioned earlier, stand back from the canvas, look at it, and, and think like an artist. Think. I know that sounds crazy. How else would you think? If you're, you are an artist, how else would you, The answer would be to uh, just kind of in, enjoy creating details. That's, that, that's the danger. That would be the death of the painting, especially one that's already got good bones. Like, see, I just painted some reflection blue and blue. And now I look at it and go, nah, nah, I overdid it a little bit. Okay, so, by the way, one of the practices that, I, one of the things that I practice a great deal is every stroke, this is an exaggeration, but I'll say it, anyway, every stroke you put down, after you put the stroke down, you mess it up in one way or another. Aha, uh -huh. I think there's supposed to be daylight. I'm trying to think of a delicate way to say this. Indeed, under Caroline's boobs. 
I usually manage to avoid saying ana making anatomical references <laughs> during my wedding painting. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it's better. Add a little bit right here. All right, I think probably this is a good place for me to end this broadcast. And if I start doing something really interesting, I'll broadcast again later. So let me turn around. So those of you who just joined me said, who, who is this guy that's doing, <laughs> who is this guy that drones on forever? <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> Thanks for watching. As I said, if I, if I find myself doing something interesting, which I probably will, I'll bring you back in later today. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Brenda, <laughs> that must have been good coffee. It was. Thank you.